good morning. Have any of y'all ever had any just big ideas or thoughts come into your head, but you begin to realize you can't pursue them? Your mind starts to present barriers, roadblocks, that really prevent you from going after this. First it says, your physical abilities, your mental preparation for accomplishing these just isn't there. Secondly, there's really no chance for you to go after this. Say you want to go skydiving. Most of us don't have a plane in our backyard. We can just go call up a pilot friend, just go flying up. I mean, most of us don't have that living. And thirdly, there's a lack of passion for this opportunity. There's a loss of passion. But today, I want to share with you three steps on how to reach, match, and fulfill your dreams. The first of these steps is a thought provoking choice that we all know is God's plan of salvation. When we're deciding to throw away our own dreams and desires in order to follow after His plan of salvation, and then we can start living towards His dreams for us. Now many of you might be saying, why would we want to be tied down to a certain religion in order to serve one being? See, the good choices that we make that follow in accordance with God's plan of salvation are kept in line with the teachings of the Holy Spirit, which I found in Galatians 5.22-23, which says love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control are the fruits of the Spirit. Now, when we're beginning to fall after God's plan of salvation for our lives, the God's going to give flight to the dreams, hopes, and desires within us. In Genesis 12, 1 through 4, the story right here is about Abram listening to the Lord's honor on his life. It says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make you great, so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And you, all the families of the earth, will be blessed. So Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him. Abram listened to the Lord's specific calling upon his life at that moment, and he trusted that God's words were the main truth. The second step to fulfilling your dreams is beginning to imagine your dreams. God asked Abram to be aware of his calling by showing him the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, renewing to him the promise that he would be the father of the great nation. Now Abram's dream came from the promise that the Lord gave to him, that he would be the father of the great nation. And in order for us to go after these dreams, in order for us to decide what we're going to choose, we need to be decisive in making every decision, as indecisiveness comes a lack of faith. Abram, without showing any lack of faith in God, left his current plan immediately, knowing that God's will was greater than his life than any dreams he could begin to imagine. We were able to connect what we love to help quicken our decisions, then a lack of faith will be the least of our problems. In James 1, 6 through 8, the verse says, But he must ask in faith, without any doubt. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. The last step in order to fulfill your dreams is taking action. Our dreams become final reality when we take that leap of faith. In Hebrews 11, 9 through 10, it says, By faith, Abraham lived as an alien in the land of promise, for he was looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. The two words by faith are mentioned 18 times in the story of Hebrews, in this chapter of Hebrews. And with the inclusion of Abraham's faith, Hebrews 11 shows us how he took a leap of faith by trusting God to fulfill His promise of a nation for generations to come. God's ultimate desire is that we do take that leap of faith and begin to see the dreams that He's planted within us, and that we use every opportunity to reach. The last thing I want to share with you today is a quote from Stephen Furrier, who's a lead pastor in Elevation Church. He says, "Don't let a barrier keep you from coming to God. The God Himself has already moved. If you go trying to move the stone on your own, you can't do it." What you can never do in a lifetime of trying, God wants you to trust that He's already done, He's already made a way, He's already provided your deliverance, He's already stronger than your struggle, and the barrier was rolled away. You don't have to stay at a distance from God's purpose for your life, because it's something you can accomplish. Heaven answers your, I can't, with the resounding, God did. In order for us to begin to step into our dreams, so they may become reality, we need to begin to trust what God is speaking to our lives at every moment.